If you are a data scientist aspirant, the very first thing that you need to go ahead and figure out is which software to use to go ahead and start programming. There are many tools available online and on the internet and in this particular video, we're going to focus on Jupyter Labs, one of the widely used ID by data scientists and we are going to cover step-by-step -step installation, getting to know the entire UI, how to get started, everything in detail and as I always say, coming up. Alright, let's get started. So before we go ahead into the screencast and start installing Python and Jupyter Labs in your system, let us go ahead and actually understand what is Jupyter Lab. Now think of Jupyter Lab as your one destination to do anything that is related to data science. You can run your Python codes, you can run uh, your uh, Jupyter notebooks, code consoles, terminals, it, you can have some image files, text file, PDF. So think of it as an environment that is meant for a data science project. Now, where do you run it? Now, Jupyter Lab is actually web-based, which means it runs in your browser. Most preferably, you can use uh, Chrome, or Edge or even Firefox and Mozilla. In some older versions, it may not run, but I would suggest you to use Chrome for the best use case. Now let's go to the screencast and look at the step-by-step -step installation of Python and Jupyter Lab, and we'll go through every single detail of this IDE. All right, so let's get started. And the very first thing that we'll do is we will download Python because that is needed to run for your Jupyter Labs. We'll search Python download and we'll go to the link that says python.org slash downloads. And once you land on this page, you can find various options to download and different versions. But what we will do is we will stick to the latest version of Windows that you will always find on the top and click on Python, uh, which is right now is 3.9.1. You can see on the bottom, it says uh, Python 3.9.1 is downloaded. I click on open file and now see it's very important that you go ahead and, uh, and click on the checkbox that says add python 3.9 to path that is super super important click on install now and uh, this should be done in a while so as you can see now the setup has been installed we'll click on close so what we'll do now if we go to windows and search for python you can you must see python app over here but what we are actually interested is then go ahead and search for CMD and when you do that just write pip help this is what is actually needed now if you get this uh, command pip command if you get this output it means your Python has been installed and this version of Python the latest version of Python includes the pip and that is what is actually needed to go ahead and install Jupyter Labs so let's go ahead and now install Jupyter Labs in your system so while your command prompt is open, what you are supposed to do it, you have to write pip install Jupyter Lab. Make sure you have an active internet connection for this, and this will start downloading your Jupyter Lab in your system. So let's wait for a while uh, until it downloads. It should take a while, and I'm gonna pause my system and come back once it's done. You can now see the Jupyter Lab has been installed. The only warning that you see here is to go ahead and update pip version, which is okay. I'm gonna avoid it for now. And let's go ahead and start the Jupyter Lab. And how we do it, we write J U P Y Jupyter. Okay. P Y T Jupyter space L A B. That's it. If I press enter, now this should open the Jupyter inside my browser. Now I'm gonna pull the Jupyter lab over here you can see it's loading so it will open in your by default in your default browser I have the browser Chrome as the default and what you see here is the landing page of Jupyter lab now let's go ahead and understand every single thing that you see over here starting with uh, the the left side bar so on your left hand side, this is called the left sidebar. Uh, this contains uh, commonly used tabs such as right now what you see is the 
file browser. If you click the second option, you can find the kernels that are currently running. The third option is table of contents. Um, you can actually go ahead and create a file that has all the table of contents. And the third one is a fourth one is the extension that allows you to go ahead and install uh, some third party plugins that you can go ahead and enable it. Uh, you're going to spend most of your time over here and here and uh, pretty, pretty simple just think of it as a file directory of the all current things that are running now whereas if you go ahead and look at the top this is called the menu bar i'll quickly go through and tell about what's in file uh, think of this will have all the actions related to files and directories and edit is going to have actions related to editing documents and other activities uh, view should help you alter the appearance of Jupyter Labs, for example, theme and all other stuff. Run contains uh, the different activities such as if you want to go ahead and run notebooks or code consoles, you can go ahead and do that. Currently, it's not active because we are not in any of the uh, Jupyter Lab or the console. The next one is kernel. Now, kernel manages the actions uh, and uh, you, you, you can think of this as these are the separate processes for running of the code mm, not not something uh, at this moment but we'll go ahead and see on how you can go ahead and work with different type type of kernels uh, tabs uh, it tell, gives you the list of all the open documents and activities in the doc panel you can go to next tab previous tab uh, different tab parts so it should be helpful and with the shortcuts too. Settings, uh, you'll find common uh, settings over here with an advanced setting of an editor, uh, the theme, the key map, console keystroke. Uh, as you go ahead and use this Jupyter Lab more, uh, you, you should uh, explore this option a lot more. Uh, help is again, uh, it's a list of Jupyter Labs and kernel help links. Uh, this also allows you to add uh, and see different type of documentation. For example, if you want to go ahead and check the documentation for NumPy, SciPy, Matplot, uh, or, or whatever, anything else, you can also come here and uh, know about the load all those documentation inside this Jupyter Lab. So that was uh, about your uh, menu bar and your left sidebar. So let's go ahead and look at another section that is called main work area. So whatever you see over here, this is called your main work area. It may be your terminal, it may be your notebooks, it may be your other text uh, editing files, everything you will work in this section. Now you might have seen that my URL has changed. So for this part of uh, the uh, demo, I'm going to use an online uh, MyBinder that is available i'll give the link in the url so that you can also go ahead and look at it just for the demo purpose now this is called the main work area and you can have different type of files over here for instance on the left side uh, uh, menu you can see that i have different files pdf file md uh, python notebook so what i'll just do i'll click double click and you can see in the main work area i have my uh, notebook open over here in the same way what i can do is i can open double click and open a readme.md file and i can also open a pdf file now in a way to arrange this it jupyter labs comes a pretty handy tool that you can take uh, this dot md file click on it drag it and if you just go ahead and place in any of the size you can see i can now divide my screen not just half what i can also do is i can take this launcher uh, or maybe let, let me do one thing um, if I go to this data and maybe click on this image now this image I can bring it down over here so you can see I can go ahead and uh, arrange my uh, main work area depending upon my needs now what I can uh, now this thing can also be accessed from tabs now you see I have different tabs open so if I want to go and move to different tabs I can just use anything that is available over here apart from that what uh, you may also notice that the Jupyter lab depending upon which file you have opened come with the context menus now what are context menus for instance if I go ahead and right click on this white space you see I get new folder new file new mountain file and paste that is an option I get if I go ahead and right click on untitled Python file you see I again get these uh, options now these are called context menus now if in any case you see this is actually running in your browser but in any case if you want to go ahead and access 
the native browser context menu uh, what you can do is you can hold your shift key then right click and now you can access view page source inspect element save as and all that so you can also do that but if you just without shift if you do right click you'll get this option one of the interesting thing uh, that we also have is for instance if i have this dot uh, pdf file or any file i want to download it i can right click on it and click on download and this will be downloaded in my directory in the same way i what i can also do is i can go ahead and upload a file also no doubt you can add right click uh, if you click on plus you get a new okay let me do one thing. let me close all this just so things make sense okay now take this plus as your uh, windows or a start menu you can see it's clear it says new launcher the moment i click it you get a new launch over here and then you get different options on what you can add you can either add a notebook a console or maybe a terminal text file markdown file or a conceptual help now depending upon uh, different type of kernels you have installed you can have python version 3 2.7 you can also have consoles we are going to look at it on how you can uh, work with consoles and a notebook briefly so anything that you want to go ahead and start add any new file you can click over here uh, now if you want to go ahead and add something from uh, your external file maybe a pdf and all you can just right click and maybe add new file or folder and then drag and drop over here uh, if you don't want to use this plus you can also click go to file new and then you get all the same options the last thing uh, in, in, in this in this section is with the keyboard shortcuts if you click on settings go to advanced editor settings you get an option over on the right hand side that says keyboard shortcut scroll down scroll down a little bit and here you see all the um, shortcuts available that the jupyter notebooks consoles and uh, other jupyter labs comes with so if i want to go ahead and change it i can copy this in the user interface i can come here paste and from alt to w i can change it to p and then i can save it preferably uh, some people like to do it uh, depending upon your choice you can go ahead and do it so that was about working with files and uh, managing your uh, main work area now we'll go ahead and look at the text editors Let's go ahead and look at the text file in Jupyter Labs. Now to add text file, you either you can go to file, new, add a text file, or you can use this plus icon that should open launcher over here, and then you can double click and add a text file over here. Now this text files enable you to add different type of configuration informations that may be syntax highlighting, key maps, basic theming, for instance. Now this is an, a file, I can go to settings, Jupyter Lab, I can go on a dark theme or I can also go back and change it to light. Now the different things you can go ahead and do it. Now for instance, you already have a Jupyter file over here. That is this one, this is text file. If I want to go ahead and open it, right click, it will open. All right, what I can also do is maybe I can just go ahead and drag it. No, it didn't work. <laughs> okay, so that you can do if you want to go ahead and rename it, right click, then you can come over here, rename, and then you can say, new.txt or if in any case you plan to change its format you can remove the .txt file and make it a markdown file too in the same way with uh, working with text files as you explore you will find ways to go ahead and use it you can also add the very famous jupyter notebooks either again with the plus icon you can see you get an option for jupyter notebook i can go ahead and click python 3 uh, this will open the Jupyter notebook that has cells and all or you can go to file new and click on notebook which when opens will ask you which kernel you want to use now for this uh, instance i only have python 3 so it will give me only python 3 but in any instance if i have different version or different kernels of python uh, installed in my system it's going to give me that option i can go ahead and add those two now Jupyter notebooks uh, uh, needs a very dedicated video to go ahead and understand it and I will leave it up to here now because uh, this is just an overview of Jupyter Lab and now we'll go ahead and look into the code consoles. 
Now code consoles are exactly the same way with your Jupyter notebooks but a slight different approach. Now if you go ahead and click on this plus icon or if you go to file new you get an option to select console. If I click that it again asks me uh, which kernel you want to use so you definitely now know that consoles actually run. Pass in the background I'm gonna select python 3 and over in the bottom over here of the screen you can find this very similar Jupyter like cell. I can write print here I can write hello world and press shift enter to run it you can now go ahead and see that it shows you the output just the way you run a particular cell in jupyter notebook you go ahead and run a particular cell in your console now just like jupyter notebooks if i go ahead and write prin and press tab it does an autocomplete and if i just go ahead and write print shift tab it gives me the entire description the parameters and the values it can accept very similar to what we have in the Jupyter notebooks and in any case if you have a lot of content in your console you can right click on the white space and click on clear console cells and it will clear everything and you can also always go ahead and click on restart kernel to restart your and to remove your or the in outputs from the program the next thing that we have is the terminals in Jupyter Labs that provide full support for system shells like Bash, TSCH, etc. on both Mac and Linux and PowerShell on Windows. You can run anything in your system shell with a terminal including programs such as Vim or Emacs. To get started and create a terminal on the launcher page you will find an option that says terminal or you can go to file new and click on terminal. Now this just act as your uh, native PowerShell on your Windows or any other Mac or operating system you have. And if I go ahead and write pip help, this should run very smoothly. Now how do you go ahead and close this console that it is running? Now in your left side uh, menu, if you click on this, you can see all the kernels and terminals that are running. Uh, they have Although you have closed it from the top, but you see they are still running. Now to go ahead and shut down, you have to click each one of them and then shut it down. Be very careful once you shut it down, all the outputs that any Python program or the terminal may have will be removed. So you want to make sure that double check before you go ahead and shut down any of your terminals or kernels that are running. Now before we go ahead, let's quickly talk about a very important and handy feature that is command palette in Jupyter Labs. Now all action inside the Jupyter Labs are processed through a centralized command system and you can go ahead and access them using a keyboard shortcut that is Control shift c or command shift c for the Mac. This should open your search option and you can find all different activities you can perform uh, inside the Jupyter Labs. So pretty handy. You use it very often the shortcut is control shift c or command shift c now apart from that to whatever we have seen now i think you might have got a good idea about what is jupyter labs and what are the things you can go ahead and do it uh, now uh, what are the different files that we can have on inside the jupyter lab let's talk a little bit about that now you've already seen we can have jupyter labs inside it we have seen you can have images you can also have PDFs, you can have HTML, you can have Markdown, you can have text files, you can have JSON file, you can have CSV files and, and a couple of more. So think of Jupyter Lab as you can go ahead and add almost everything that is will be useful for your data science project. Now we also have some uh, advanced features like adding uh, external uh, libraries I mean for instance adding external plugins and all that that is something I would suggest you to go ahead and explore and in the coming video uh, we're gonna talk about Jupyter notebook very specifically we'll go in every single detail we'll talk about keyboard shortcuts so that is the call to action after this video and if you have reached at this point of video thank you so much for watching till here in this channel we talk about engineering data science and programming and if this is something related to you don't forget to subscribe my name is Stephen Simon and I'll see you in the next video